So we know that shellfish is a really important part of the UK seafood industry. Crab certainly is a major element of that. I've come today down to Devon to meet the Blue Seafood Company. I've come to see David Markham, their managing director. And we're going to talk to them about their markets, about their outlook, and about where the company is going forward. So I found David Markham, the MD of the Blue Seafood Company. Um, David, we met in China just recently. We could see how volatile and changeable the market is for crab products in particular. But tell us about the last 10 to 15 years or so in the crab industry. Yeah, well, we started the, the business uh, 15 years ago and, and everything's changed since then. Back in those days, there'd been a, an oversupply to a largely UK and European market. Um, there was three big retail uh, suppliers and uh, some small crab meat processors all dotted around the country and then quite a lot of live crab going over to Europe. Um, now we've seen since 2009 the opening up of uh, China and the Asian whole crab, frozen crab markets and in the last three or four years the live crab market as well. So we've seen a massive change in the, the price of crab which was probably very needed by, uh, by especially the smaller local boats. Um, so far more demand. Um, we had some cracking year a couple of years ago with the live and frozen. China with the trade wars has tailored off a little bit since then and uh, the market's stabilising a little bit but uh, we know there's been an awful lot more boats built on the back of this extra demand that will come online coming up next summer. So we're in a very different place but the, the additional competition has made everybody up their game. So the products, the, the meat products that are going out into the market are, are much better quality these days. Um, and everyone's having to, to, to really look at the, how they run their businesses. And, and tell me, you, you, you say you source from all over the UK. Just give us a flavour of, of where your products are coming from. Yeah, well, we, we buy uh, crab from locally is our main area, Salkham and Kingsway, on the inshore potting agreement. Mm -hmm. um, but we also buy from, from Bridlington, around Scotland, uh, a little bit from Wales, over in Ireland, and we've got crabs landing into Holland as well. Okay, and for the company, you, you've, uh, I can just tell walking around this place, you've, you've, you've gone from uh, small beginnings to, you know, you're, you're growing and expanding. Uh, what has it meant for you and the staff here? Well, it's been a huge journey. When we started, there was uh, five partners and six members of staff, and we were all crammed into a tiny room, or we built a, a very expensive crab factory with no customers, slowly built it up, started to supply the retailers like Sainsbury's and Tesco's. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as soon as we did that, we had a big fire and burnt this place down. We then moved down to the harbour site and slowly built ourselves back into food service again. And I've only been back at this site now for about uh, two and a half years and uh, are now growing dramatically again with about 180 staff now in the factory, you know, trading all over the world. So it's been a, it's been a roller coaster, but, uh, but we're getting there again now. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really fascinated by, uh, you've got a great commitment to the local community and in particular your staff. Just tell us a little bit about a couple of the things that, that you do here. Yeah, well, we, um, we recognise that in the last few years it's been harder to get staff. It's always been easy before that. And uh, one of the, uh, the benefits that will come out of that will be people will need to look at how they attract and retain staff and some basic health care that people allow staff to claim costs of dentists, for example, back. We have uh, fun things like zoo tickets that the team can take any time and go with their families to the zoo. Um, we have a staff council to, to, to interact with the team to make sure that we're addressing uh, concerns. And then, of course, we have you know big parties. We also give a percent of percent of our profits to, to, to bonuses every year as well. And I know you're also keen to, where you can, employ people from uh, different backgrounds uh, and people have taken a different path in life. Just tell us about some of that partnership working. Yeah, well, we've, um, we've sourced workers from all over Europe, but we're very keen to encourage more and more uh, British people into the business. It's obviously not the sexiest uh, jobs in the world, so it's, it's always a challenge. But we, uh, we work with some prisons, and uh, Trevor, the chairman, has got a sort of halfway house for people coming out from prison. And it's clearly really important that they get um, some housing and a job as soon as possible to prevent them or minimise the chance of moving back to their old ways. Mm. Moving ahead, the Blue Seafood Company in the future, the next few years ahead, do you have a, a, a vision of how that might go or is it going to be more um, suck it in sea and see how the market fares? 
Yeah, well, although we're at the moment we're, we're just crab, we're, we're looking at, we're not in all of the markets. We, we think of us as, as the crab meat market's very big for us, the whole frozen crab, the live crab into Asia, but we're not doing any work in the European live crab, which we might look at. And then we'll look at, um, uh, at other species, for example, whelks and, and perhaps some fish as well, and uh, leverage our expertise in the Asian markets particularly to try to, to move some of these products out there. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking some time today with us. Uh, thanks for letting us have a look round. It's been really good to meet you and the team. Uh, wish you all the best for the future. Pleasure. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers.